Hello and welcome back to Not A Watch Snob, I am your host, Bill, and today we have a very interesting topic for you, so go ahead and hit that subscribe button and tickle that like button because you are in for a real treat. Cars and watches. Name a more iconic duo. You can't. Recently, a buddy of mine sent me a Instagram post that basically compared watch brands to car brands and what a watch would be if it were a car. Um, and I thought I'd go through the list with you and tell you my thoughts and which ones I agree with and which ones I don't. Let me know what you think uh, is correct and which one is not correct in the comment section below. Let's begin. Number one, the first one is on point. They're both technologically advanced, they're both really, really expensive, and they're both a piece of junk. Apple Watch and Tesla. I 100% agree with that. I think that the Apple Watch is a great comparison to a Tesla. Like I said, they're both full of tech and they are the most junkiest uh, in their retrospective categories uh, out there. I mean, people go absolutely ape shit for these Teslas, but let's be honest, it's like riding in a fucking tin can. I mean, it's like riding in a tin can that can talk to you. That's pretty much the gist of it. Um, there's nothing really too mechanically sound about those vehicles. For Christ's sake, look at this. Oh, it is a Tesla. Spot on. The next one on the list, Cartier and Bentley. Now, I would agree, they're both very recognizable, they're both um, super luxurious, and they're both, you know, obviously a pinnacle of wealth, but um, I don't know, there's something very quintessentially English about a Bentley. It is, it is like being at the helm of the entire British Empire. Yeah, that's not gone well. And there's something so Europeanly French about a Cartier, so I just, I don't know, I. I just think that, yes, they're both recognizable. Yes, it's kind of a toss up. I just think they're both recognizable. I think they're both luxurious, but are they equivalent or on the same spectrum when it comes to their uh, respected brands? So uh, that one, uh, it, it could be a toss up, could go either way. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Now here's one that I'm kind of confused about. A Lang and Soul and Coeseg. I just don't get it. Oh my God, that's a big one. A Lang and So is just such a luxury watch. It's so beautifully designed. It's so um, mesmerizingly gorgeous. It's it's the pinnacle of luxury. And when I think of Coaseg, I just think of uh, a douchebag with way too much money. So I I just don't I don't really see the comparison. A sports car and 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 a very luxury watch. I, I think. Maybe Alien and Song would be like a uh, a Jaguar or something like that. I, it just it doesn't it doesn't equate to Coaseg in my opinion. I think it's more like a, a very high class you know Jaguar. I think that's where that's where an Alien and Song would be. Not not a Coaseg. I mean, come on. Next we have one that I will 100% agree with to a T. It is Rolex is equivalent to Mercedes. Now all you Rolex fanboys out there are probably uh, losing your fucking minds, but um, hear me out, hear me out. So, uh, Rolex, it's the pinnacle of a status symbol. Um, you have a Rolex, it's a it's a, a display of wealth, and, and I think that Mercedes is the exact same way. I think when you drive a Mercedes, you want the world to know that this is your status symbol, this is where you are in life, and you're doing great. Um, but at the same time, um, you can see anyone who's a lawyer or a gangbanger uh, driving a Mercedes, and if you think about it, Rolex is sort of the same way. You'll see your Rolex wearing uh, a lawyer wearing a Rolex, and 
You'll also see someone who sells drugs wearing a Rolex. Preferably, probably an iced out Rolex. But I think they both are, are synonymous with each other because um, they're synonymous with uh, a status symbol that are kind of easily obtainable in a way. You know, it's like uh, you're not a billionaire and, uh, you know, if you're a billionaire, you, you can get something more than a Rolex. But if you, you know, make $100,000 a year, you could easily afford a Rolex if you wanted. So I think that they're, they're on the same playing field, if you will. Next, we have Patek Philippe and Rolls-Royce. I 100% agree with that. I think Rolls-Royce is that comfortable, gorgeous, beautiful looking car. I mean, they got the stars, roof. That's, I mean, that's what I want in my fucking car. But I'm here doing YouTube, so that's why I'm never going to have that. Um, but, and I think that Patek Philippe is just, it, it's, it's such a luxury brand. And Rolls-Royce is that pinnacle of luxury as well. So I would agree 100% that Rolls-Royce and Patek Philippe are on the same, um, the same playing field. I'll use that, that term one more time. Next, we have something that's a little confusing to me. But at the same time, I, I guess I agree with it. I would say it's similar. It's as close as you can get. But we have Artemis Pugo. <laughs> I fucking butchered that. We have AP, Artemis Pugo, and Porsche. Now, yes, okay, so Porsche is like a... Uh, is a sports car sort of it, you know it's known for performance and luxury it's kind of a mix between the two and i i would have to say that ap is on that same plane i mean the royal oak that's like your ultimate sports watch um and i think that you know a porsche is an ultimate not sports car but performance uh is it the ultimate performance car but it's an, it, it's it's known for its performance and luxury same with ap i think that they're they're on the same plane so um, I think they're they're very very synonymous with each other, so I would agree that AP and Porsche equal to each other. Um, I think you know AP is a lot more uh, uh, higher up when it comes to its brand recognition or its uh, its its wealth, I guess, its net worth. And Porsche, like yeah, you you eh, they're both for douchebags, but Porsche is like somewhat affordable if you get an old one. I I guess net worth wise, they're not really, but. Uh, for what they represent, 100%. Next, we have one that really confuses the shit out of me. We have Vacheron Constantine, the pinnacle of of luxury and wealth and, and status, and Ferrari. A sports car for dicks on TikTok. I, I just, I don't see the comparison here. Ferrari's uncomfortable. They're, they're just a fast uh, Volkswagen, pretty much. Uh, or is, or is that Lamborghini owned by Volkswagen? Whatever. Um, they're just a fast car, a sports car. I, I, I don't get how Vacheron Constantine and Ferrari are even on the same plane. Um, I think if you were to compare Vacheron Constantine to any car, it would probably be... I guess it would have to be either Rolls-Royce or Maserati. I think Maserati, like their, uh, their SUVs, I think that... Maybe a Vacheron Constanti would be like a Maserati SUV. I just, there's really no perfect comparison for a Vacheron Constanti. So I'm a little lost on that one. Let me know what you think a Vacheron Constanti would be in the comment section below. Next, we have one that I think is perfect. Omega and Audi. Um, let's be honest, uh, you know, we said Mercedes and a Rolex. Uh, Omega has always kind of ridden, not rode the coattails of, um, of Rolex, I think it's always been at one point neck and neck and fallen behind uh, Rolex. And same with Audi. I mean, Audi, they're both German and Audi and and Mercedes, they're both German, but uh, I think that Mercedes has that oomph when it comes to uh, recognized status. Same with Rolex, where Omega also uh, in its, in its retro, in its Omega in its own way is recognizable, but not at that that peak where uh, Rolex is. So I think uh, I think it's spot on where uh, Omega and Audi, very similar. Plus, Audi is known for uh, performance as well. And uh, I mean, let's be honest, Omega is also a very hardy sports watch. Next, we have Invicta and Mitsubishi. I 100% 
disagree with this one. Now, the reason why I disagree with this one is I think um, if you're going to compare Invicta to anything, it's going to be Honda. The reason being, you're driving down the road and all of a sudden you hear behind you, and you're thinking, oh shoot, I'm going to see a nice car. And you're looking around, you're looking around, and next thing you know, a fucking Honda Civic shoots by you with the ugliest spoiler you've ever seen and a disgusting looking hood scoop. And for some reason, parts of it are red and parts of it are black and it's as low to the ground as you possibly can get. And you're thinking, what the fuck was this guy thinking? And sometimes you look at an Invicta and you think the exact same thing. Um, I think it's a loud, I think it's a in your face design. And I think that some people do that to their Hondas. And I think that if you're gonna compare the two, they're both uh, obnoxiously in your face brands. So I think that if you're gonna compare Invicta to anything, it's a souped up Honda, uh, a Honda Accord or Civic, whatever, whatever one works for you. But yep, I think, uh, I don't think Mitsubishi at all. Next, we have Richard Mille and McLaren. I would disagree on this one. I think that, yes, a McLaren's a sports car, but if you had to compare it, uh, a Richard Mille to any sort of car, I'm thinking Koaseg. I think Koaseg is just kind of, bleh, it's, a, it's in your face, it's obnoxious. And uh, same with McLaren. I mean, same with McLaren. Same with Richard Mill. I think that Richard Mill is in your face and way too damn expensive and Koaseg is the exact same thing. So I think McLaren is close. I just don't think it really hit the nail on the head. I think uh, Koaseg hits that nail right on the fucking head guy. Next we have Jacob and Co. and Bugatti. I woke up in a new Jacob and Co. Um, I think... Um, they're similar. I think Jacob & Co. are more like a work of art than it is a watch brand. Bugatti, maybe it's a work of art. I, I don't really know. I'll be honest with you, I've never been to Bugatti. Nor have I ever seen one, to be honest with you. But um, Jacob & Co., Bugatti, it's a toss-up. I really, I don't know. I think Jacob & Co. would be more like a... Uh, Ugh. Would Alfa Romeo be one? Eh, Jacob and Co. Bugatti. We'll, we'll keep it at the same. We'll keep it at that. I, I, you let me know what you think in the comment section below. Next, we have... I, I think this one's spot on. Um, let's... Okay. We'll, we'll paint a story for you. Let's paint a story for you. You just spent upwards to $73,000 on a brand new car. And the second you drive it off the showroom, it goes from $70,000 to $20,000. And every service costs you an arm and a leg. That is a BMW. And what would you compare that watch brand to? Hublot. Hublot is one of those watches that costs you 12 grand and the second you try to resell it, you're already at two. So I think that Hublot and BMW, perfect, perfect for each other. They represent each other to a T. Um, Hublot is that like gaudy sports watch and uh, you know, BMW is somewhat the same. It's kind of got that sportiness to it, you know, the M series and uh, yeah, I, I would 100% think that a, a Hublot and a, a BMW, spot on, on par, on par. What do you think? Next, we have Casio. Casio is equal to Honda, they say. I disagree. I think Casio would be, to be honest with you, I think Casio would be more like a Nissan. Um, it just, it's there. I mean, and it tries. They make great cars that work. Um, good space, you know, the, the Murano. Um, they got that 360 camera. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, for the price, it's not a bad damn car. And I think Casio, exact same thing. I think Nissan and uh, Casio, very similar. Next, we have Seiko and Toyota. I think to a T, those are spot on. Um, they're both reliable. They're both, I mean, let's be honest. The NH35 movement itself is literally the Toyota. Uh, just keeps on going uh, of, uh, <laughs> of watches or cars, I guess you could say. 
Um, and I think that, you know, if if you really want to go by this, um, a Grand Seiko would be a Lexus, which is just a, a damn expensive Toyota. So I think that, uh, yeah, I think they are on par with each other. We got Seiko and Toyota. Perfect. Match made in heaven. Uh, in the books. Bye bye. See you later. Next, we have something that I think also really works well together. I think uh, Tissot and Volkswagen. Volkswagen owns every freaking car manufacturer in the world, um, or every car brand in the world. And um, I think Tissot is a perfect entry level Swiss watch. And Volkswagen's a perfect entry-level German car. I mean, if you think about it, you go up from there. You got Audi, you got uh, BMW, you got Porsche. Um, and I think the Tissot is a perfect entry-level Swiss watch. From there, you can go up to, uh, I don't know, Hamilton. You can go up to wherever your heart desires. Um, and I think that, you know, honestly, they're both very reliable watches. They're both solid watches. And Volkswagen and, and Tissot, on point. Lastly, I think we have a great comparison. Now, you guys are going to flip out at me in the comment section below, so get your uh, keyboards ready, get your typing thumbs ready. We have a Volvo is equivalent to... <laughs> Lastly, we have a Volvo is equivalent to a Tudor. I know, I told you you were going to get mad at me. I think that Volvo is that understated luxury brand. And Tissot is... Uh, Tissot, I'll be alright. And Tudor is... I think that... I think that Volvo is that understated luxury brand. And Tudor is also very understated as well. Um, I'd have to compare the two. I think that they're spot on. Uh, I know you think of Volvo, you think of a family car. But you should see what they're doing. Um, and you got to trust me because I'm, I'm a car salesman. But um, no, I think that they are uh, equally just, uh, no one really thinks of Volvo when they think of luxury, and uh, no one even heard of fucking Tudor. So uh, I think they're equal. They're on the same playing field, and uh, I know you guys are pissed at me in the comment section below. So go ahead and write to me. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Go ahead and like this video. And remember, I'm not a watch snob, and neither are you. What car brands equate to watch brands, in your opinion? And uh, I'd love to see you next week. And join my Discord, join my Patreon, join my fucking website, notawatchnob.com, where we sell $7 snob straps. And join me on Whatnot at Not A Watch Snob. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of your day.